Hello everyone, welcome Hello. aboard. So again, we have brought you the new session of uh, Delhi Current Affairs Capsule. And this session has been brought to you by Himalaya IAS classes. If you want to join IAS 2021 batch or KAS exam batch in English or Kannada medium, you can always visit www.himalayaiasclasses.com or you can reach out to us on this given number. So before we start the session, the significance of current affairs for a civil services exam. So in the prelims, you have a straightforward questions coming from the current affairs topic. In the mains, the current affairs questions are asked directly and also used indirectly in answering a lot of uh, questions to get good marks. Essay, it is very important where you have to write multiple dimensions of any topic. Plus most of the interview questions are related to the current affairs. Now, the first news related to uh, civil services exam in today's uh, topic is free hand has been given to the armed forces for responding at line of actual control. So we know that a lot of uh, conflict situation is going on bet between India and China at the line of actual control. Labor wise, it is part of the international relations. And in the mains paper, international relations is the part of general studies paper too. So what has been uh, done here, we all know that on the 15th of June, uh, the face off happened between the two forces, uh, Indian Army and uh, PLA. And after that, the situation has got tensed. And now the armed forces has been given the free hand in assessing the situation and then taking appropriate action. See why this is important here. We all can think like, okay, this is always the case where they can take appropriate action. Because of the agreement what we have along with China, the border agreements of 1993, confidence building measure agreement of 1996, as well as the agreement of 2005, these agreements, they prohibit the use of firearms within the two kilometer range of LAC on either side. That is why this uh, decision becomes significant. And now it is up to the armed forces to assess the situation and then take appropriate action as needed. Okay. Next is a judgment which has came from Supreme Court that the secrecy of ballot is the key to free and fair elections. Okay, so election process is a part of polity. Okay, and mains polity is the part of general studies paper two. So what uh, basically the Supreme Court judgment says that the ballot secrecy means to whom you are giving your vote, it should not be disclosed and you don't need to disclose that. Okay, and you cannot be bound or compelled to disclose that it is, it is the key to the free and fair elections and to the healthy democratic society. Okay, so as per the section 94 of RPA Act, even uh, nobody can force you to disclose to whom you have voted. Okay, the only case where uh, this gets supposed is uh, during anti defection law where the party whip can check your votes in the times of no confidence motion and all rest in uh, every other ballot until and unless the voter doesn't want it or doing it on the voluntary basis, nobody can compel them to disclose to whom they have voted upon or to whom they have casted their vote. Okay. Next article talks about again, India, China, a lot of articles related to that. Let's see them one by one. So uh, India is continuing a uh, two front conundrum. Conundrum is nothing, but it is like puzzle. Okay. So syllabus wise, it is part of international relation and international relations, the general studies part two, it is contained in there. So what is the problem? Problem is of two front war. Okay. So actually uh, in the beginning when after independence, when we were making our defense preparation, then we assumed mistakenly, of course, that we don't fee if uh, have so much threat from China as we have from Pakistan. So that is why we made preparations for dealing with Pakistan, but we sort of avoided or we couldn't prepare ourselves to fight with China. So the example of it is like uh, even to deal with the Pakistan in the 1971 war when Pakistan was getting a benefit of support from China or even the United States, India went ahead and it signed a treaty of peace and friendship and cooperation with Russia in 1971. So it is like balancing itself. Uh, but in 1962, because of avoidance of China factor, we have uh, faced adversaries in, in the defeat in the war and we have lost some areas. So the whole argument of the article is we should try to avoid this obsession with Pakistan. India has to face and it has to be ready on the war at two front one and that two simultaneously one from Pakistani side and another from Chinese side. 
so we have to realign our policies we have to make preparations in order to keep india ready for a two front war situation not just aligning our policies to deal with the pakistan next article today it is related to social justice and it talks about the increasing cases of domestic violence during this lockdown situation so slavers why social justice which is the part of general studies paper 1 issues related to women so because of lockdown a lot of women they cannot come out of their home plus economic fall down uh, so like the income of lot of uh, people it has gone down and usually it is the women who have to bear the brunt of this frustration actually during any crisis situ- situation you can think of the partition movement or you can think of any war uh, torn country as of now so women are at disadvantage they are the most they relatively they are exploited more or they face more you know harm in any of the crisis situation uh reasons like okay first they do lot of unpaid care work none of their work is economically a point um, accounted for let it be cooking of food or taking care of the kids okay and plus they face lot of restrictions as well plus in this lockdown situation where priority has been to you know all the administrative machinery is working to contain the covid situation not their cases are not being reported that is another problem which has given uh, you know increase in the cases of domestic violence against women so what can be done is first thing is the access to the health must be ensured so whatever needs from the health point of view is needed it has to be fulfilled their nutritional need or access to the basic health services plus we need to work on making them financially independent see if they are financially independent then you know they can take their own decisions which will help to to reduce this type of instances in the future okay next article today talks about the rajya sabha so recently elections have taken place so a lot of times manipulation and all happens the political part it's not of use to us but the article discusses the importance of rajya sabha so let's take a look at that so rajya sabha it's part of the parliament and uh, comes under polity which is part of the general studies paper 2 so what is the major role of uh, rajya sabha or which is known as council of state or house of elders it institutionalizes the power sharing between center and states in india's federal structure lok sabha represents people of india as a whole and rajya sabha represents the states okay also the election to the rajya sabha it represents as a second house because you know it is called as house of elders more scholarships or people with scholarly abilities and statesmanship okay so now because of ingression or you know admitting the entry of celebrities and business tycoons these values are being avoided or they are being uh, declined also the role of rajya sabha gets reduced by uh, making any bill as money bill so in the polity we all know that uh, rajya sabha has limited power when it comes to the money bill and any bill can be defined as money bill by the speaker of the lok sabha so if let us say the government wants to skip the deliberation by the rajya sabha altogether and we have seen such instances in the past past so then um, they are making any bill as money bills and skipping the rajya sabha so that is where rajya sabha is not able to function or to perform the duties which it is supposed to do okay next article again it is about china policy so it tells the certain objectives of the china policy which we need to take a look at so syllabus it is part of international relation and international relations is a part of general studies paper 2 so this article tells us the strategic objectives of the chinese policy towards india okay and which we need to keep in mind while designing the policies against china or for containing china so in a nutshell it is first uh, we see continuously we have seen in the past in the doklam we have seen 2017 plus again from may we are seeing the face off situations on the lac so actually they are trying to claim their superiority they are trying to tell india again and again that we have edge when it comes to the lac line of actual control uh, they think of them not as equal asian powers with india they consider themselves as superior that's what they want us to realize that is one second objective is they by showing this power or by this show of disturbances they are trying to warn india that not to actively oppose chinese designs into the indo pacific region see we all know that india has become part of quad which is the alliance of four countries india us japan and australia 
okay and we always uh, keep advocating for uh, unrestricted or free access to the international waters so this is a sort of warning again which they try to give to india that do not oppose chinese intentions in other parts of the world second they also by this type of uh, problems and by supporting indian neighbors they want to indi keep india preoccupied in the neighborhood itself so that they can't oppose the chinese designs outside elsewhere in line with this policy that's where they keep supporting pakistan both economically as well as strategically so that they keep creating problems for us and india keeps getting occupied in this region so while creating a policy see all the articles which are you know, being published these days they will be talking about a policy creation for china everybody is advocating that from prelims point of view whenever there is an act or uh, you know some factual data then you can remember this all this information will help you to have an opinion because definitely you can expect questions in essay type or you know in the mains type questions that how to do or what to do or how to create a policy firm policy against china or what steps should india take that's where these articles or these points will help you okay there's no need to buy hard them just go through it and you know take a sense of it so we need to keep all these points in mind of chinese strategic objectives and then we need to create a diplomatic policy for china to counter these objectives of chinese policy next article today talks about jal jeevan mission so we have already uh, discussed this a uh, few in one of the earlier session also so this session is by jal shakti ministry okay and it has asked for additional funds for jal jeevan mission so part of prelims government schemes they are asked in the exam and government schemes are also part of general studies paper 2 so first thing jal jeevan mission is uh, being implemented by jal shakti ministry why news because it has asked for additional funds from 15 finance commission okay what is this scheme's objective the objective of the scheme is to provide tap drinking water to every rural household by 2024 please remember this to every rural household by the year 2024 as of now just 18% of the households are covered not important just to get you an idea that how much is done how much is remaining okay it is facing resource constraint we all know that because of the economic impact of the covid lockdown so the jal shakti ministry has asked for the control of the panchayat grants for sanitation and water projects whatever money so actually 14th finance commission which was the earlier commission that recommended that more decentralization and more power to this uh, bodies panchayati raj institutions more autonomy more funds to them to empower them but here jal shakti ministry is asking that because we are facing the resource crunch and there is less less money available so for the same need for creating the water uh, resources there in the rural areas or for, for providing the tap water in the rural areas whatever grants are assigned to the panchayati raj institution the control of that grant uh, should go through the jal shakti ministry so if they are doing so this as per their view it will lead to the better monitoring and better coordination if you think from the point of view of decentralization it is a step back from the decentralization or empowerment of the panchayati raj institutions so this angle is for mains for prelims just remember jal shakti ministry jal jeevan mission providing rural uh, tap drinking water to every rural household by 2024 next article today is about another uh, medicine which has got approval from uh, drug controller general of india okay so a lot of medicines are getting or drugs are getting approval these days uh, because we need to fight this covid situation so prelims part of science mains part of general studies paper 3 so just remember the name of the drug it is remdesivir okay so remdesivir is the name of the drug which has got approval and it will be sold under under the brand name of covi4 okay c o v i f o r and it has been approved for a treatment of covid patients and a hyderabadi firm they will get the approval for manufacturing of this uh, version of drug okay so remember remdesivir which, which will be sold in india with the name of covi4 next another article uh, from a former indian ambassador to china that uh, saying that china has strategically lost india for a very small tactical gain or on, on the ground okay so let us see what he says syllabus wise part of international relation and international relation is the part of general studies paper 
So uh, this article says that uh, this border peace and tranquility agreement of 1993, which we have earlier told you, which prohibits any use of arms or which provides for a peaceful resolution of any border dispute, okay, that has been broken by China. They have attempted to unilaterally define LAC. That's why all the problem happened because they are entering onto the Indian side and they are creating observation posts. They are creating their tents, okay. So as far as India is concerned, our bottom line has to be the restoration of the status quo. Means as things were before. So going back of the Chinese military. Okay. But this is the time to reassess our China policy. Till now we have thought that uh, even if there is a dispute, border dispute, we should not stop the economic uh, exchanges between the two countries. But uh, the former ambassador, he clearly says that we should keep Chinese companies out of the 5G trial. See, 5G, fifth generation telecom uh, technology, it is supposed to happen. And this is going to be the next big thing, which will fetch a lot of money for any company who gets uh, the contracts or who uh, participates in the creation of the infrastructure of the 5G. Huawei is uh, one such company, which has been actually blocked in USA as well. But uh, as of now, they are participating in the Indian 5G trial. So uh, the article clearly argues that we should stop Chinese companies. We should allow them elsewhere where less money is involved, but this is going to give them more benefit. So strategically, we should keep them out of this. Okay. And now further deterioration in the relation of both the countries can be expected. Okay. Because uh, see, because of this uh, small, we can say when it comes to the territory or unilateral attempt to change the status of line of actual control, China has lost the strategic angle or strategic uh, benefit what it enjoyed with India. Okay, because in the long run, now you are not going to trust them. Now, maybe we need to counter them at other forums or platforms in order to keep the pressure on them. Okay. Next article talks about the golden langur. So EVS, a lot of time they ask you the habitat, natural habitat, the IUCN status. So let's take a look. Uh, Slavus wise, it is part of environmental science. And mains environmental science is the part of general studies paper three. So golden langur, first thing is the status is endangered. Remember that found in two places in the world, Assam in India and Bhutan only. In Assam, Manas National Park, please remember this. So sometimes they'll ask you in which of these places you can see the golden langur. There will be four or five national parks which will be mentioned. So please remember Manas National Park. Then um, one interesting thing the article talks about is that they have a practice of infant infanticide. They kill their babies sometimes. The reason might be because of uh, this is fragmented, not fragmented, because their habitat is fragmented. Okay, and their natural habitat is uh, semi evergreen or deciduous forest. So, if to make the question interesting, they can add one more point. Otherwise, try to remember the IUCN status endangered and the natural habitat of golden langur. So, that was it for uh, today's current affairs session, guys. This is a list of do's and don'ts which you can follow in order to maximize your chances of selection. Please do not forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to this channel and to press the bell icon so that you can get notified whenever we upload any new current affairs video. Thanks a lot for watching.